Hello, 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 everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for that um, that uh, intro, Felicia, that helps to always review the tech because there's always something that gets fouled up for me whenever, whenever I'm on Zoom. I always need those reminders. So welcome everybody uh, to, to my watercolor class. And you can see on the screen here, uh, this cool 12 pointed diamond uh, star that I'm going to show you how to make today. And so first I'm going to go through the different supplies that you'll need to have on hand and, and show you the supplies that I'm using for this course. I'm going to give you a quick four tips on how to maximize your watercolor experience and then we'll get into the actual painting and I'll and I'll show you step by step how to make this art. So um, let's see here. First of all, if you don't know me, there, there's me. I'm Josie. Hi. Um, you may have run into my uh, social media as Josie Lewis Art. I'm, in, I'm on all the different channels and I do fun and satisfying watercolor and other types of art videos. Uh, they're sort of, you know, short, satisfying videos that you may be in, interested in uh, pursuing, you know, these different styles and techniques further. And to that end, I'm very excited because uh, we were just able to release a full uh, suite of products that you could purchase at Michael's that include watercolors and acrylics principally, but we have paper and patterns and brushes and palette knives and all sorts of things. And one of those products we're going to be using today. And so I'm going to show you what we'll be using here. So this is the Pattern Play Watercolor Project Kit. And I'll unpack it here so you can see what's in it. And if you're, if you have this kit already, uh, give me a 10-4 or a thumbs up in the chat so I can see how many people. I see Liz has one. I saw her actual thumb because I could see a couple of people on my screen. Hi, Liz. <laughs> Thanks. I can't see everybody, but I could see Liz. I see uh, Smitha, who is also in Minnesota. I'm in Minnesota. Um, has the kit. Gail has the kit right on. Okay, cool. Felicia just put the... Um, the link to the kit in the chat so you can see where it is. So here you can see I'm unpacking it. And of course I was distracted while I was talking and I and I wanna narrate what we have here because this kit's awesome. It's got everything you need. It's got the watercolor set, the 12 color set and a little case uh, with a lid. And I actually use that back of the lid as a mixing board. I see some other people already have it right on Marcy and Candace, amazing. There are three brushes, three different sizes. There is a little mixing well, which is, I, I don't think I'm using it in this project, but it's super handy to have. And then some real perks of this project, there is a watercolor, sort of like a, a watercolor panel that you can use for your special projects. There's a little booklet that walks you through different techniques and some color tips that can help you. And then of course the watercolor notebook, which has printed designs on it. And this, this is a little blown out on my screen, so you might not be able to see it, but each page in this watercolor uh, pad has a different design that you can use to, you know, basically it's like up level coloring. So you can paint in the design rather than coloring in the design. Okay, so now I want to just talk a little bit about watercolor. Liz says these printed designs on watercolor paper are flipping awesome. I agree. I also think they're awesome. I think it's so much fun to use those designs when I'm making art. So um, glad you are excited about that. Um, and Melody needs to give up and buy every single item from this collection. I agreed. <laughs> just give up now and then just think about all the cool art you're going to make. I love that. I love it so much. Okay, so I'm going to just talk about a couple of watercolor tips. So watercolor is so one of those mediums that's just I think it's so magical and so and so spectacular. You can literally take it with you on a plane, on a boat, in a train, 
even in the rain, <laughs> might do something cool to paint watercolor with the rain. I don't know. I, I actually, I probably have tried it. Um, and uh, it is, it, you know, you can just have basically a brush, some water, a source of water, some paper, and then the set itself. And that's it. It's so, so, so simple. And uh, while the setup is very simple, any of my friends here who have done much work with watercolor will know and they will testify that it is actually quite hard <laughs> like painting paint, watercolor painting is simple and in a lot of ways it's easy but when you start working with it you'll find that watercolor has a mind of its own in fact i was teaching a workshop a few years ago and i have a friend who is an improv comedian which is of course with improv you're up on a stage and nobody knows what anybody else is going to do and you're just trying to be funny with other people and she said watercolor is a lot like improv I do something and then watercolor does something <laughs> and sometimes watercolor does things that we don't expect and so I think that the best way to use watercolor is to allow it to have its own personality and to know that watercolor has a little bit of a mind of its own and it can sometimes feel very um frustrating because you're like I didn't want it to do that <laughs> but it's okay just kind of let it do its thing and then you'll start to learn how to cooperate with watercolor as you you know become a better artist so those of you that have done a lot of watercolor painting uh tell me in the chat if you know what I'm talking about that watercolor has it, its own personality <laughs> and its own a mind of its own um so big big and helpful tip is don't be a perfectionist with watercolor let it let it do it's uh let it let it have its way sometimes uh, marcy says i feel like it all tends to run together yes and i'm going to give you some tips today to help with that because there are some ways that you can kind of control control certain elements of watercolor oh and by the way as you can see i am in the chat, I can I can see the chat as it's coming through. Um, and so I will continually keep an eyeball on the chat um, and try to answer questions as they come. And um, the uh, we also have Anna, uh, who is uh, with Bria Reese, who is the manufacturer of this kit, and she knows everything about the supplies, and she will definitely be able to weigh in with any kind of um, with any kind of uh, answers as we're going. But like I said, I'm going to be keeping an eye on the chat as well. Okay, so uh, one of the things that's important to note about watercolor is that it is translucent. So uh, you can layer it on top of each other. So I have this big ginormous watercolor painting that I did a few years ago, where you can see that there's quite a lot of layering that's happening. So each, each individual layer is is a you know diluted with quite a bit of water but then when you start to add these layers on top of each other then it gets uh you can see the the layers and the colors start to mix and that is a really cool way to um, think about watercolor because sometimes if you're trying to mix too much it's translucent. So you might end up like just kind of getting it, it might just get kind of muddy. So you have to think kind of strategically about how you're layering the colors so that it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't lose the vibrancy that you want to keep. We're not going to do a lot of layering in this, this today's project, but for future watercoloring uh, adventures, this is something that's helpful to keep in mind. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice in most watercolor kits, you will not see the color white. That is because water, clear water in your in your vessel is it adds the color, it, it adds the lightening effect. So with acrylic or with some other paint mediums, you need to have white paint. But with watercolor, you can dilute the color and create a lighter tint just by adding more water to the color. And you know, a little bit of science for you. What's actually happening when you use when you use water rather than white paint is that the uh, the color goes over the paper like a veil, and then the light goes through the color and hits the paper, and then bounces back to your eye, so it looks like it's glowing. 
And sometimes when you use white paint, white paint is actually, it's a little counterintuitive, but white paint actually kind of absorbs light and sucks it in and can feel kind of pasty. So if you can use the white of the paper and use the lightness, uh, using water as your um, medium to create more light in your painting, the more luminous and vibrant it will be. And then finally, granulation is something, this is another, this is something about watercolor doing its thing and sometimes um, not necessarily doing what you want it to. Uh, granulation is what happens when watercolor dries in interesting and organic patterns. So what that means is watercolor, most watercolor is made from pigment and pigment is basically ground up rocks. <laughs> that have color to them. And so what happens, even though that, that um, gr the, the pigments are ground very, very fine, what'll happen is it, when it's drying, the, the various pigments in the watercolor will sort of create its own um, level on the paper because watercolor paper has a tooth, it's called tooth. And the, the tooth of watercolor paper is that texture that you can feel like when you run your hand across the top of it. And of course, there's different types of tooth in watercolor paper. You can buy hot pressed watercolor paper, which is very smooth, has virtually no tooth. And then cold press, which is what my, my uh, watercolor pad is made from, which has a decent amount of tooth. And then you can get rough watercolor, which has what rough watercolor paper which has quite a lot of tooth and that's like you know really really bumpy paper and and depending on your style and what you like to create you might use all three of those for different projects i like a, a classic middle of the road cold press paper and what will happen is you'll see these cool organic shapes that will emerge they usually emerge as it dries so you might not know what's going to happen in fact you hardly ever <laughs> You hardly ever get to know what's going to happen. You have to wait for it to dry. And then it's like, oh, okay, that's what it decided to do. Okay, so now, and feel free to pop in with any kind of questions as I go. But now we're going to get started on the project. Here we go. Okay. Oh, I'm going to show you just a couple of projects. This is, that's the one we're going to make today. And here are a few more projects that you can make with this kit. And you can see there's another 12 pointed star and a simpler approach. And I just painted a, some color swatches on that one. These are all in this notebook. And I made these all with the paints that come with that notebook. There's lots of different approaches that um, you can use with this kit. Okay, so now I'm gonna jump forward here a little bit. Let's get our setup. So what you should have with you right now is uh, the watercolor pad. You'll have the watercolor paints. You'll have a couple of round brushes, which is what we're going to use today, and a, um, a cup of clear water. I always like to have a paper towel nearby as well. And if you are painting along with me, uh, give me a thumbs up in the chat so I know how many people are, are actively doing this project. I'm going to start with the swatch card. And the swatching is very important when you are doing watercolor because the um, high quality watercolor paints are um, Often they do not, uh, you can't tell what color they are in the pan. So you can see, especially with the blue and purple range on the right side of my palette there, you can see that uh, they all look basically black or very dark, you know, dark blue, dark purple, um, brownish. And the reason why is because high quality watercolor paints um, have a exceptional high pigment load. And you add water, like uh, as I was saying, you add water to create the dilution that uh, will, um, you know, create the different tones. And so in, in this particular watercolor set, there are, you know, 12 different colors and a range of blues and purples, uh, but you can't really tell what colors they are just by looking at the, the watercolor palette. So creating a uh, swatch card is very helpful 
I, you know, if you, if you use a palette for long enough, you'll start to remember where your favorite colors are, even if you can't, you know, tell by looking at them. Um, but since this is a brand new palette for most of you, it'll be helpful to add the water and then swatch it out so you can see what um, color it is. And as I'm doing this here, for those of you that are swatching along with me, you can see that I'm really rinsing it. I'm really rinsing the brush uh, in between every color because I, of course, I want a pure representation of the color. I don't want it contaminated with a different color. And that's, that is something that's gonna help you a lot as you are working in uh, watercolor is to uh, make sure that you are creating good brush discipline so that you won't pull in a color that you didn't mean to bring in um, when um, when you're going in between colors because just the tiniest bit of blue or the tiniest bit of red that gets into your yellow will create an orange or a green. And if you're trying to go for pure yellow, you'll be frustrated. Um, there's a couple of questions in the chat. Liz says, I feel like wetting the palette, like saturating it is very necessary to get the paint to work well. Yes, I, I would use, I use a lot of water. So sometimes you might need to dip your brush several times into the the watercolor, um, your your clear water, and uh, and then really squish it around. And I'm going to go back a little bit here so you can watch this happen. So you can see. Um, let's see here. Let's go to this one. So I'm putting. There's a little bit of reflection there. So I give it a good rinse and then there's quite a lot of water on there and I got a little bit more water. So you can see that I'm really trying to pull that pigment up. So I have a, um, you know, a strong and vibrant color that produces and you can always, you know, just squish it around even more. All right, then uh, Marcy says, can I use a ceramic plate to mix the color or will it bleed into my plate? No, a ceramic plate can work great. Uh, you, you can use, sometimes I'll even use like a disposable pl plastic plate. Um, I, I find that like uh, paper, a paper plate works better in some cases, sometimes with ceramic or with glass, the water will bead on the surface and it'll be a little bit harder to see. Um, and then I also prefer a white or a neutral toned mixing plate because if, if, it's a co if it's colorful, then it'll be a little bit harder to see the colors. But okay, so there we have the, the swatching and that you wanna keep nearby so that when we start the painting, you will um, know uh, what your colors are. Okay, so then now I'm going to jump into our, uh, our the notebook with all the different cool designs. It was hard for me to decide. I did this this morning. So <laughs> I decided to do it ahead of time because then I can like pay more attention to the comments in the chat and, uh, and, and guide you and slow things down if I need to so that you can uh, um, paint along with me. So I decided to go for the the 12 point star, because in this particular technique that I really like, it's uh, it's quite dramatic and, and I, I enjoy um, having a larger shape to, uh, to, do this, to, the, to do this style that I like to call burnt edges. So now you do not have to tape your paper down. I decided to just tape the edges just so it doesn't slide around when I'm working. If you're going to do a very wet process with watercolor, you might consider taping all four edges down. In this case, it's, you know, the paper is pretty good quality and won't buckle on you too much. And the uh, this just kind of stabilizes a little bit. And I think I think in this project, this might be off camera, but I actually taped my palette, my the the paint tray down as well, because it was sliding around too much when I was when I was trying to capture the colors. And so I just put a little bit of tape on there just to hold it down. So it wouldn't wiggle, wouldn't wiggle too much. All right. So now the first step here is you want to use your clear water and just fill in the shape. So here is something that will help you a lot with watercolor. When you are painting with watercolor, the color will stay where the water is, where the paper is wet. 
And so if you are selective about what part of your paper gets wet, then the paint, the paint color will stay there. So you can see I'm really, um, really soaking it in, you know, so it's clear water and I'm really soaking it in that, that first triangle. And then I'm starting with purple paint and I want to get it very, very, very concentrated. So you can see, I really dabbed it for quite a while because I want to have like an all, you know, very, very dark, uh, color because the, the, the more, um, the more paint you use, the stronger the color, because as you know, watercolor, uh, once it, you add more water to it, then the color becomes lighter and lighter and lighter. And to get this effect of this like burnt edge, I call it, um, I want there to be like just loads and loads of pigment on my brush so that that it'll do its thing. It'll, it'll bleed into the wet of the shape and it'll stay where the paper is wet. It won't run all over the place. Now, if you are, if you are working at an angle and you have pooling water on your paper, then that might run a little bit. But if you're working flat and your paper is damp, but not pooling, you know, so it should be, it should feel cool to the touch, but not have like a bunch of, you know, you, a bunch of like water that's all, you know, puddled up. Um, if you do get water that's puddled up, you might want to take a little bit of paper towel and just soak up some of that water. So now what's happening here is I have filled in the color and I added not only a little bit of purple with that last triangle or with the last diamond, but a little bit of pink too, because I like the, the fuchsia. Um, I like those two colors too. Um, interact just a little bit. And then now I'm moving on to the next diamond. And once again, I am rubbing the, the water in pretty well. Um, and it's clear water. So you have to kind of get the, the light angled right so you can see where it is. And what will happen is, as long as I keep that moat clear, there's like the moat between the first, um, the first shape that I painted that's still wet, of course, and then this next paint, this next shape that I'm painting. And as long as you don't let those, as long as there's a little tiny strip of dry paper in between these two shapes, you won't have any problem with the colors bleeding. They'll, they'll stay where the paper is wet and they won't jump. <laughs> like they won't leap into um, another section. Now, if you, you know, are like not sure about your hand steadiness, um, you could pause in between each shape. If you're worried that you're going to like kind of bump into these other shapes, then you could pause, you could use a blow dryer. Sometimes I use a blow dryer to see if, um, to see if uh, I can um, speed the process a little bit. But in this case, I'm just working with everything being wet. And um, so what I did in that previous diamond, I'm gonna go back to that because I just wanna point this thing out that I did. So I, I used one of my blue paints but then I decided I wanted to add a little purple too, because I'm basically doing a glorified color wheel here, but I want the colors to interact just a little bit. I want them to just add some more dimension and some interesting shades that are happening inside the colors. Okay. Um, Ooh, Candy says Michaels has these promo kits for 40% off. Are you kidding me? That is a good deal. <laughs> like if you don't have it yet, you should clearly go get one right now. Okay, so now um, you have basically seen the approach for this project, which is adding a little bit of water to that diamond, filling it in completely, and um, and then kind of swishing the water around. The, the paper will soak up the water a little bit. Um, and, and then you want it to be, like I said, moist and damp, but not pooling because if it's pooling, things just get out of hand. And then I'm moving to a teal turquoise and, um, I am, um, once again, getting it as concentrate as possible for that outside edge. And what you will notice here is that it takes a little while 
because of the way watercolor is, it takes a little while before it starts to kind of like bleed into the wet area of inside the painting, but it will get there. It will absolutely get there. Just gonna increase the scale of this. Oh, whoops, that's not what I wanna do. I'm gonna increase the scale of this a little bit so we can really see what's happening here. So once again, I started with the blue and then I added a little bit of the teal. And now I'm working on the next diamond. And this one, I'm going to go with the teal. Uh, Lori is saying that she likes the pointy brushes. Yes, there's a lot of different shapes you can work with. And without a doubt, my favorite style of watercolor brush is a round brush with a nice pointy tip. So that's what we've got here. This The one I'm working with right now is the number two. Um, there's a number two and a number, you'll have to tell me if you have the kit in front of you. I think it's a number two and a number four brush. I could have those numbers wrong, but I'm using the smaller of the three brushes. And then there's a mop brush, which is one of my favorites when you're really trying to cover a lot of paper and, you know, do a lot of things. So Lori said she got the travel case obsessed. I love that travel case travel case. All right. So Liz, Liz is saying, I'm going to pause this a second because maybe I'm moving a little bit too fast. All right. Um, yes. So Liz is saying I'm finding hard, it hard to do this and keep up. Yeah. Well, so one of the things to keep this, uh, to keep this presentation under an hour, um, I have to move things along fairly quickly. However, you got two things going for you here. One is that we will have a recording up for you. So you'll be able to slow it down. If you're finding that this is going too fast, you'll be able to go to the recording on YouTube in a, in a day or two, and you'll be able to watch it again. And she's saying specifically knowing which colors you're choosing for each one. By the end, you will essentially have used each of the 12 colors as a base for each diamond and complementing it with additional colors. That's exactly right. So I'm going to start I'm really doing a color wheel here. So, and, and I would like to mention too, that these are the colors that I've chosen, but you could choose any color at all. And every time I do this project with people, um, or projects with watercolor, you know, I, again, I would do it different. So you could just a rainbow, or just be a color ending with purple. Um, or you can just follow your heart and, and, and do any number of different things um, that seem interesting to you as you're going. So hopefully that, hopefully that answered that question. So once again, I am thoroughly wetting that diamond and I'm going to be moving on to green ultimately you want that bottom if you're going to do if you're trying to do the color wheel like a full spectrum of rainbow all the way across you'll want this bottom um diamond to be yellow so you, you I'm moving slowly to green and so it's going to get more and more green as I move around the wheel here. And then because blue, purple and yellow are opposite each other on the color wheel, we want to find it, it'll be more or less yellow when we get to this bottom triangle. And one of the things that's really cool about watercolor is that you can mix it. You can certainly mix it on a, plate or on a palette and sometimes I do and in the, in the case of this particular project I am not I'm mixing it on the page and not on uh, an additional palette so while the watercolor is wet um, you can add a little bit of 
a, an additional color into the wet watercolor or even when it's dry because watercolor is translucent. So I just added a little bit of gr more green to that teal diamond because I want to get it to be pretty green now because that last that last diamond is going to be on the yellow side. And I can't actually remember if I if I landed exactly in in order because I don't know. One of the things that happens to me on social media is people like get upset because I don't do rainbows right <laughs> because they I don't know they they think they, there's a lot of opinions about how rainbows should be. My personal opinion opinion is that rainbows can be as individual as people are, <laughs> and so you can do rain if you want to do rainbows with just blues, you can. If you want to do rainbows with, I don't know, starting with brown. You can, you, you know, you do rainbow, you do you with your rainbows. And like I said, every time I do projects like this, the distribution of the colors shifts and changes um, a little bit every time. So uh, that's the, that's the marvel. That's the beauty of, of painting is that it, you can change it and um, everybody has their own unique approach. So one of the things that's great about watercolor and especially painting patterns is that it is um, so relaxing <laughs> because you kind of have a plan and a system and then you just are walking it out. And um, and it is it's it's just a fun way um, to spend a couple hours in the afternoon or something when you just want to relax a little bit. I find it's like it's so helpful just to regulate my nervous system, just to play with the colors, try different things. <laughs> Lori says it practically paints itself. <laughs> practically, practically it does. Okay, so now in that last diamond that I just did, I, I had told you that I wanted it to be mostly yellow. And one of the errors that I made there is I didn't rinse my brush quite enough. And so the clear water it was supposed to be clear water that was soaking into that diamond, but I, it had a little bit of green in it from the previous color. And you can see that green in that, in that, um, in that diamond. And I, you know, if you put something down that you are like, oh shoot, that was a total mistake while it's still wet, you can go back in with a piece of dry paper towel and dab it up like it, it's almost like an eraser it's pretty it's pretty remarkable so I didn't choose to do that in this particular situation I decided to just go with it <laughs> I mean, Lori says chartreuse is awesome always agreed agreed I deeply love chartreuse so um so I decided that I I wouldn't dab it up I was just gonna let it let it roll and you can see I added just the teeniest tiniest little dabs of green into that yellow diamond because one of the things about um especially when you're dealing with the the um, secondary colors so you know that um blue and yellow create green but it's never a one-to-one -one ratio and especially when yellow is concerned yellow is a, is a softer color and uh and usually especially with high quality paints um reds and um uh, reds and blues are going to be much more staining. So to, to create a nice mid-range grass green, you will need to have um, about five parts yellow and one part blue, or even less. It might be 10 to one. It's just like the tiniest bit of blue and a lot of yellow to create a nice green. So, and the same thing is true for orange. Um <laughs> Uh, Lori says, for every tube of blue and red, I buy two tubes of yellow. It's true. You need a lot more yellow. It's it's really true. Um, Jewel says, should I have paper towel or scrap paper towel to brush on to check for a clean brush? Um, I In this project, I am not doing that, but I do recommend having a, I love paper towel nearby. I, I do use paper towel later in this project so you can see me use it. And I have a roll of it because I'm really clumsy and I, I'm always knocking stuff over. So I, I know I need to have the paper towel nearby. Um, and then having a scratch paper is very helpful 
with a different type of project. With this one, it doesn't matter so much because we're not mixing quite as much um, because we're pretty much mixing on the page. We're not like mixing off page, um, which, you know, if you have a mixing tray and you are mixing, that's quite all right. But in this case, it, it's not how I did this project. Um, Liz says the paper towel at the end is always so pretty. Indeed it is. Sometimes I feel like my paper towel or my blotter page is more awesome than the art. <laughs> <laughs> that I created. I'm like, how, why does this look so good? I don't understand. Um, okay, so now we're coming around to orange, and that orange is, is very, very strong, um, as you can see. And so I will, I'm, you know, dabbing it in. I'm making sure here that none of my diamonds are touching still, which does take a little bit of hand, um, hand eye, you know, steadiness. Um, but as, like I said, as long as those wet parts don't touch, uh, you will, everything will stay where you put it, which is, which is kind of nice, except for the, the bleed that you do want, which will happen inside the wet diamond. And you can see that my paint water up there is getting pretty dark, but when I am applying it to the page, uh, it's, it, it, it still looks clear, although my brush was a little bit dirty there. So you can see I had some yellow on the brush just because I didn't rinse it good enough. But um, but you can uh, a decent sized um, vessel of water will last quite a while before you'll have to switch it out before the color, the pigment in the, the rinse water will cause you problems in your painting. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind as you are as you are working. I'm moving up to the crimson and it's just, it's like, it's always so much fun for me to see um, what it will do when it hits the water, because it does make these awesome granulation shapes that if you can, I think that what's fun about a project like this is that you have this pretty rigid geometrical design but then inside the forms you it's like um you get to have all sorts of um all sorts of cool organic shapes that emerge so it's a it's a nice contrast between those two elements um barbara says what about two using using two water bowls one clean one dirty yes the pro watercolor artists will use two two watercolor dishes or two, two rinse water dishes. So one will be clean, one will be dirty. I have tried that and I forget like, and then I basically try to drink one of them too. So I just use one because I can't seem to keep it together. And then if I need to rent, if I need to dump it and get new water, um, then I can do that. But if you are really coordinated and you can keep, keep track of which one is the rinse water and which one's the dirty water, uh, or the clean water and the dirty water, then you you should definitely do that. And I know some excellent watercolor artists that do that very well. And um, it's exceptionally um, it's exceptionally effective if you want to have that clean water. All right, so we're coming uh, towards that last diamond now, which I want to be a combination of purple and fuchsia. So in your paint tray, it, it'll be, you know, if you, if you set up your paint tray like mine, it'll be the, um, this, this color here, the fuchsia, and then one over and one up is your, is the purple. So I'm going to start with the dominant color, which is going to be the fuchsia, this one here. Um, and then I'll add in a little bit of the purple afterwards as I've been doing to you know kind of like create these color blends throughout and for those of you that are painting along with me here I'm curious to know I you know just because of the constraints of this um this recording and and not being able to go all day it, I'm imagining it will take most of you a little bit longer than it's taking me um, when I when I filmed this earlier. Um, but let me know if you want me to back it up. We can rewind and, and look at some, some sections here again. Um, or uh, you can ask any questions as they're coming up. I'd love to see 
what you make. So Felicia just shared in the chat some hashtags that you can use. You can also tag me on Instagram, Josie Lewis, Josie Lewis Art. And, uh, and if you tag me, I may in fact share your work. So here is an example of me using paper towels and I'm gonna go back and just show you that again. So I decided that that one diamond uh, is a little bit, um, I, it got a little bit too dark and I wanted to like preserve some of the, the light. And of course you can't quite see it because my hand's in the way, but I'm just using a little bit of wadded up paper towels and I'm just dabbing it. And you can see it brightened it up considerably because it was still very wet. As long as it's still wet, you can lift it. Um, and then I'm using just a little bit of water to see if I can dab dab up those centers. I like it when the centers are the centers of the diamonds are quite light, and then the organic forms of the watercolor colors kind of like bleed into it and create really interesting shapes. And then sometimes you can kind of guide that along with your brush too, as you can see here. I'm, I decided I wanted to blend those colors just a little bit more. And as long as it's still wet, you have a lot of flexibility. And even after it dries, if you add water to dried watercolor, because it's water soluble, you'll always be able to lift it a little bit. I mean, it will stain the paper, so you wouldn't be able to do it like a complete, you wouldn't be able to completely erase it, uh, but you can always go back and adjust it a little bit. All right, my friends, um, there is the project. Do I have any questions that I can answer here before we conclude this today? Any questions, my friends, any questions? There's a lot of different projects that you can make um, with this kit and, you know, of course, any watercolor paper or any watercolor supplies that you have. Um, I think I think there's a dozen different patterns that are in the notebook um, that are that are just really fun to to paint. And uh, yes, uh, Marcy, that's a great question. I can, in fact, show you some of the other projects that you can make with this kit. Here we go. Here we go. Well, here's the, let's see, here's some of the ones that I've already painted. Hold on. Okay, so this is, this is the end, this is the end version of what we just made together once it's dried. Liz says she regrets not taping. Okay, so she's finding some pooling and buckling. All right, that's good to know. Tape would have helped. Um, have you had, Jewel asks, have you had any luck uh, using watercolor in a coloring book? The trick about a coloring book is a lot of times the paper isn't doesn't have the quality uh, to hold the watercolor that you need. So you really do need watercolor paper to, um, to make it to make it work. Um, Lori asks, is the pattern pad available on its own? This, this particular pad is not available on its own, but there's a really cool hexagon shaped pad that has a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of shapes um, and, and the same idea that are that are um, printed on it that that one is really great. I don't have an image of it here. Um, there's a question in the chat for Anna. Is your watercolor paper cotton or cellulose? I do not know the answer to that, but Anna, who, who is on the Breary side, she might. So maybe she can answer that. Um, it's cotton. It's cotton. There we go. It's cotton. So one of the things that I find with all, um, all paper from any manufacturer and at any, um, uh, quality level, or I should say, you know, price point, um, you can spend a lot of money on watercolor paper. And then there's some more budget watercolor paper. And I have found that uh, there's some watercolor paper that works for my process and some that doesn't. Um, but every watercolor paper has it also it's a mind of its own. <laughs> so I sometimes when I buy a new, uh, a new watercolor kit, I have I have found that um, or a new you know new water I'm trying out a new watercolor paper I have to learn the watercolor paper just just like I learn um, the paint itself because even different manufacturers of paint 
change all the time. And here we go. Here's my, here's the project that we just worked on today. Once it's all dry, go. And if you go to my Instagram feed and you want to see this image again, you can go to my Instagram feed at Josie Lewis Art and you will be able to, I have this image in, in at one of my most recent posts so you can see it again. All right, my friends. Well, um, unless there's any last minute questions, um, way to go, Candy, for, for buying one of these kits. 40% off, that's an incredible deal. Um, the one that looks like stained glass is there too. Yep, that one's in the notebook. Um, besides paper, what else can you use watercolor on? Now that's a good question. Hmm. I don't think you can watercolor on canvas, but you might be able to. Um, I don't know, Anna, do you have any ideas? <laughs> I don't know what, what else you can use watercolor on. That's a good question. I've only ever used it on paper. I think that watercolor yeah. has to soak into something. So go ahead, Anna. Oh, um, what watercolor board did you yeah. say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. There's the panel in the, um, in the set, but, yep. uh, I think you pretty much have to stick with paper there. I think there, I think because of it soaks in and it needs to have something to hold on to, basically, unlike acrylic paint, which you could just put on top of virtually anything at all, including glass and all sorts of things, but um, clothing for dolls. I think you might have problems with um, painting on fabric because it would, yeah, somebody says it would be very light. I think it wouldn't have the staying power. It's also water soluble, so it wouldn't stay it might not stay along unfinished white plaster of Paris that could that could work Marcy try it out let me know how it goes <laughs> um the your finished for inspo um the one right underneath you are you talking about I'm not sure what you're asking Liz but thinking about this one here this one this design is inside this notebook so you will be able to um to to paint that one as well okay my friends well i'm gonna say goodbye thank you so much for joining me today i would love to see whatever you make so use the michaels tags that are in the chat and also you can tag it josie lewis art or josie lewis um, because I'd love to see it. It'd be so fun. All right, guys, thanks a lot and have a great day.